spirit doesn't inhabit the body. Um, you know, spirit is not in flesh. And I thought, wow, what I've always believed to be true is that I am spirit having a physical experience and that spirit is animating this body in some way. Um, so I guess I'd just like a little bit more clarification around that statement. Yeah, yeah we can take the metaphor of, um, we can talk about like Pinocchio in the sense that um, Pinocchio was always wanting to be a real boy, you know, to not be a, a puppet or a marionette, but to have a real, real life experience. And that kind of shows how this animation, um, even in, in the world of uh, cartoons and animation, Walt Disney, you know, took a bunch of images and he just flicked them together and with such great speed that to the eye, the eye perceived the continuity of not a static image, but a motion picture. Cartoon characters are, are literally just a bunch of images on a timeline that are strung together in such rapid succession that there's no breaking point. You know, it looks like a continuous movement. And, and so when we say the, the body seems to be animated and the plants and the animals and so on and so forth, like the spirit is behind all that, we, we have to realize that, that the ego took the power of the mind, it was invested in it, and it, it was the Big Bang, and it, it did all the animation. It did the animation of the Big Bang, and then with evolution and, and creatures seeming to grow and form on planet Earth and so forth, all of the animation and even all of the energy behind the animation is part of the ego's world. Now within that metaphor, it's like, well, where the spirit, how does spirit even then relate to us, or to the body, and to the world? And if we continue with the, the metaphor of Pinocchio, it would be to flip it around and get to a point of saying, okay, I'm tired of being a real little boy, a real little girl. I'm tired of being the man, the woman, that, or I've never been fully satisfied. I've always been seeking and searching for more, or to try to become better. And to say, I'm ready to get back on the strings, and I want you to pull the strings. I think that was one of Wayne Dyer's books, pulling your own strings. Except this is more saying to the spirit, you uh, be the one to, to guide and direct the strings. And that's what A Course in Miracles is saying, is saying that the only purpose, I remember when I first read that, Jesus says that the only purpose that the body has, the body is solely a means of communication. That's it. It just has one purpose. And then another point of, of the Course, he actually says, the only purpose of the body is to let the voice for God speak through it. That's even more specific than just calling it a communication device. And, I don't know about you, but if I look back into the parable of David and the history, I use this body for many, many, many different things. You know, we could talk about not only to, to walk, or to swim, or to run, or to have sex with, or to eat with, or to ski with, or to play tennis with, or to play golf with. Or, you know, if you, you really made a list, if you just sat down and looked back at your life and you said, what have I used this body for? Every one of us could make a long list, really quite a long list. And, of course, those things would have involved <clears throat> pride, striving, working, playing, um, as well as seeking for things and avoiding things. We, we, we use it for all those motives. And those are all ego motives. I mean, even playing, we, we know there's a value to play because we know how, how fun it feels. But, but when you get caught up in a game and you lose track of yourself in the pretending, a lot of times when children are playing, they're just pretending. 
when you lose yourself in the pretending, then that even is part of the ego's trick as well. So, when I first got into this, I thought, wow, is that, that's all the Holy Spirit wants then, is the, the voice for God speaks through me. That was a problem initially because I was very shy and I thought, hmm, yeah, maybe somebody else uh, than, other than this one, because that doesn't sound really appealing. And then the other thought my ego had was, you know, that, that actually sounds downright boring. Uh, you know, variety is the spice of life, and you know, just like if, you know, the ego says it's good to have a lot of money because it gives you more options, you can buy more things and do more things. Well, if you're a body and you seem to have a lot of options, that seems to have a bit of pizzazz, a bit of spice. You know, it's, it's stimulating to be able to do lots and lots and lots of different things. And then when you start to get into, okay, the body has one purpose. <laughs> Let the voice for God speak. You can see the ego is not at all thrilled by that one purpose. I've even done talks where I've been talking like for a full day, and someone will raise their hand at the end of the day and say, you know what you're talking about sounds very boring. <laughs> Extremely boring. And I, and I, don't, I don't think that's for me. <laughs> it's just too boring, it's too monotonous and everything. And, it's, and, I, and from the ego's perspective, you have to understand that, that even the Course in Miracles to the ego would seem pretty boring. I mean, he's, he's really just talking about the same thing, and he's, he's zooming around like he's a little, uh, like he's Tinkerbell with a little wings going, zooming around the very same thing. He keeps going around and around and around. He comes around to you and he goes, right in front of you, did you get it? <laughs> Duh, no. So he goes around again, <laughs> did you get it? It's very circular. It's very symphonic. You know, people have read the Course and they say, oh, come on, he's just saying the same thing. He's just saying it in lots and lots of different ways. And that's just kind of like the spirit going, did you get it yet? Did you get it? I'll try this one. I'll try this way. You know, it's like, I want you to get this. <laughs> and I'm going to hang with you, so I'm just going to keep lightly spinning around and we'll try to, to get it. So, that's how the journey goes. And when you really have a desire to have the experience, then I will tell you that the Course in Miracles will get simpler and simpler and simpler. It won't seem like this big book. It won't seem like a task or some kind of a deep, long, heavy burden. You know, a lot of people feel that way, like we just had the retreat up there in Maitland. And, and I remember you were saying, oh man, I'm just seeing, I'm just at the very beginning of this thing. And it can feel almost like a heaviness, like, like there's so far to go with it. But the more our desire starts to stir up, the more the love and the peace starts to really ignite inside our hearts, then all of a sudden our readiness to really have the eyes to see and ears to hear just gets, we get much more ready. We're really ready to really have an experience, have a, have a real experience of what this is really talking about. So to me that's been my life's calling is, is First of all was to have the experience and have it in a sustained way so that it was it was a constant experience. And then the joy is to let the spirit come through in many, many seemingly different ways, using all kinds of different uh, learning aids and all kinds of different symbols. That's why, you know, I've enjoyed, I've actually enjoyed the travel. Not when I was a kid. I was one of those kids, are we there yet? You know, kind of that hated to travel when I was young, but then it actually becomes inspired because, because of the purpose behind it. it. That's what enlivens, that's what makes the travel a joyful adventure. And it's the same with, with writing, you know, it's like, I mean, I swore that I would never write a book. I mean, I figured with the course, we've got the course, there's just no need for a book. So actually the books, that are over there, I didn't write them, I spoke them. And somebody transcribed it and put it into a book. I didn't sit down with a pen to you know, 
It was just, it was just given. And it's the same with singing. I do a lot more singing now than ever. I like to go on singing tours. I never thought I would go on a singing tour, but I enjoy singing. You, you enjoy, it's just the inspiration comes through you and it, it gives you this sense of energy and vitality and aliveness and a childlike sense of wonder and joy and glee because it's so present. It's not stuck on that timeline, you know, which is where the monotony and the repetition and all the, the heaviness comes in when we think we have to repeat something over and over and over. Yeah, yeah it's beautiful because that's that is a tendency once you even a, a, a defense mechanism like projection, once you start to consciously see that oh, I've been blaming, I've been projecting, and you start to pull it back. Really what you're doing when you when you pull back the projections is you're pulling them back into the mind. The mind that was trying to project them out onto the screen of the world, and you're really pulling them back and seeing that no, the cause is, is in my mind, it's not an external cause. But the tendency when you start to pull the projections back from all the characters in, on the screen and all the different circumstances is to, oops, you get it back this far and, and blame the personality self. Because that personality self is associated with the mind. You know, sometimes when people say, you know, uh, my thoughts, they'll point to the skull, as if the thoughts are up in the brain. But the thoughts aren't in the brain, the thoughts are in the mind. The brain itself and the body is just a projection. So if you start to withdraw the projections from the other bodies, the tendency still is what we would call self criticism, self-condemnation, and that's pretty common with, with Course in Miracles students and teachers is to, to say, okay, I'm getting much more laid back and low-key and accepting and tolerant of my brothers and sisters, but the tendency to be hard on yourself as a personal self is the same thing. And that's why when someone kind of holds it in and, and really doesn't reach back to the full sense of forgiveness that a lot of times what we call cancer, uh, heart attacks, those kind of things, that's the ego still projecting the guilt onto the self that it's still identified with. And it's, that means you just have to go one more step back to get back to your mind, away from this idea of the body. At one point Jesus says, body is outside you, but it seems to surround you. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. Nobody ever told us that. Mom, I hurt my knee. The body is outside you, but it seems to surround you. <laughs> Mary Baker Eddy for a mother. Wow, that's cool. You know, you, you, know, you start to, to see in your own mind that, that you do have to apply those metaphysics, and, and that means in the end you have to take this off the hook too. You know, this can't be a source of blame, when it's just another symbol. But the reason it's just projected with so much blame is because the, the ego mind has identified with it. It thinks that it now has a home in the body.